This episode of Anxiety Slayer is brought to you by revivingmind.com. Reviving Mind offers virtual therapy and anxiety support groups facilitated by experienced licensed clinicians. Learn more at revivingmind.com. This week, we're talking about how to calm morning anxiety, as many of us are facing returning to work or have children who are returning to school or heading off to college. Hi, Ananga. How are you today? Hey, Shan. I'm good. Thank you. It's so good to be with you again and to talk about a subject that we really haven't addressed in quite some time, but we're getting a lot of questions about. So let's dive right into how we can help ourselves when we suffer with morning anxiety. When I suffered with anxiety in my youth, late teens, early 20s, morning anxiety became a real thing for me. It was very debilitating and I would wake up every morning feeling extremely shaky and nauseous and found it really hard to step into my day. What are some of the symptoms of morning anxiety? The symptoms of morning anxiety are often the same as the symptoms of general anxiety in my experience with the addition of nausea and loss of appetite. That's particularly common with morning anxiety, but otherwise the usual symptoms, rapid heartbeat, tight chest, shortness of breath, physical tension, muscle tension in the body, uh, strong feelings of anxiety or a sense of dread about facing the day ahead, and feeling confused or mentally overwhelmed, like everything's just too much to face. And thankfully, we have lots of suggestions for how to make that better. But before we go there, let's talk about some of the causes of morning anxiety. It's usually caused by the same factors that also contribute to general anxiety, combined with that stress and overwhelm of facing a new day. And then also there's the natural increase in stress hormones that can happen for us first thing in the morning. I remember being much more anxious when I had a a workplace that I traveled to than, than I do now having my own business everything that needed to be done before going and then becoming a mom and adding in caring for my daughter and getting ready and getting off to work and all of the things that come at us. We have so many things that we juggle. So it's no wonder that we can have these feelings of discomfort in the morning. There's other things that can also cause issues in the morning. Low blood sugar, uh, if you drank alcohol the night before, the anticipatory anxiety that can come sometimes before a big day at work or a big day at school, and the negative self-talk, those gremlins in our brain that can get us all riled up. And then, of course, uh, negative news and TV, film, uh, anything that's coming through your screens that is agitating, all contribute. Yeah. And then there's that fact that the transition from being asleep to being awake is quite a strong transition for the body, certainly for somebody that's suffering with anxiety. Um, We go from, you know, being not really conscious of what's going on around us to often waking up with an alarm clock or a sudden jolt and kind of sitting up and thinking, oh, this is what I have to deal with today. And if you're already suffering with anxiety, that stuff can really hit you in a domino effect and really stack up and cause strong stress response, a strong anxiety response in the body. The good news is this is something that can be very much supported and changed. I think that uh, alarm clocks are really not okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, me too. Truly. I mean, I'm grateful for the alarm clocks that play you know, soothing music or will Mm -hmm. do something that will help you transition from sleep to being awake versus loud buzzers and, and things that jolt you awake. Yeah. They just cause a sense of anxiety upon hearing them, which is why so many people, you know, throw them across the room or hit snooze. If there's a way that you can figure out how to get up without that jolt with a little bit of more softness and sweetness. After the break, we'll be talking about what helps morning anxiety and the things you can do to start your day feeling more calm and in control. 
This episode of Anxiety Slayer is brought to you by revivingmind.com. Reviving Mind offers virtual therapy and anxiety support groups facilitated by experienced licensed clinicians. For a limited time, Anxiety Slayer listeners can get a free 15-minute consultation with a trained specialist that will guide you to your best option, whether it be individual therapy or one of Reviving Mind's support groups. Your safety, privacy, and mental health are of utmost importance. If you are inexperienced with counseling and prefer to start with individual therapy prior to group therapy, you can get one month of group support for free when you choose to partner with Reviving Mind for individual therapy. Learn more about all of Reviving Mind's offerings and claim your free consultation and unlock the power of group support at revivingmind.com. Let's dig right into what helps morning anxiety. We talked a little bit about it before the break, the whole alarm clock thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the word alarm, mm-hmm. it's there in the title. We don't need any more alarm. Uh, we recommend waking up as gently as possible, as you already said, Shan, before the break. Try a gentle alarm clock, something that fades in gradually so you don't wake up with a jolt. And there are so many options. Um, from something on your wrist that will start buzzing you awake very gently to a wake-up light alarm clock or an application on your phone that has a gentle alarm that gradually fades in. Experiment and see what helps. When you mention, Shan, hitting the snooze button because, you know, we might object to the alarm going off, that reminded me of something to mention, which is when we hit snooze on an alarm, we drop back into a deeper sleep. You often find that you go into a much deeper sleep. Your dreams might be quite vivid. And then you might wake up again and hit snooze again. And every time you hit snooze, you'll drop back into a deeper sleep. So each awakening is more of a job. It's actually um, a technique used in hypnosis to help people go into a deeper, relaxed trance is to start to bring them out and then take them back in again and bring them out and take them back. And every time they go back, they go that bit deeper. So when we hit snooze and drop back into that deep sleep, we can have quite intense dreams. We might have touched already on something that's on our mind. So we'll drop into something there that's, you know, quite provoking. And then if we hit snooze again, we're going to drop back. We don't wake up feeling good or rested. Better to have something gradual that's going to help you wake up gently. That was a, a habit that my daughter got into for a long time. And she just deeper, deeper, deeper asleep. There was no getting her up. And so um, you had to gradually change that so that she could get up. I think the other thing to bring forward that is important is so many people start their day with caffeine. So many start the day with coffee or with a caffeinated tea. And if adrenaline spikes are causing anxiety, we don't want to provoke things further with caffeine. And this is where we have alternatives, a milky cereal-based coffee that you can enjoy with a little honey or a decaffeinated tea. Um, I like drinking chaga tea. There's many, many choices. And I realize that when, when you have that habit, when you, that morning coffee you can be like, no way are you taking away my coffee. I still have one cup of coffee in the morning and I tolerate it well. If I didn't, I wouldn't have it. But Um, I also will alternate and have other things sometimes just to mix things up a bit. If you want to feel more awake, use the shower and alternate the temperature. Use an uplifting scent like grapefruit or tangerine, something like that, or even uh, lemon. These are all things that will bring you awake and make you feel better in your body than, than adding more caffeine to the mix. Yeah, some people tolerate caffeine better than others, according to their body type. But we know when we've got a problem with caffeine, when we use personal language about it. (laughs) You Mm -hmm. say, I have to have my coffee in the morning. I have to have my cup of coffee to start the day. Couldn't be without my coffee. Mm -hmm. Then we know that we're in a relationship with it. So, you know, there's different options. We can phase it out gently. Ayurveda doesn't recommend doing anything too suddenly. So 
you know, you can take it a bit weaker. You can add cardamom to reduce the impact of the caffeine if it's a, a flavor that you like. I personally really like cardamom. Just different things you can do to phase it out. Or if you have a couple of cups, go down to one cup or a less strong brew. And another thing you can do is to look at that cup of coffee in the morning if you're calling it my coffee and use EFT tapping and just tap through the point saying, can't get started without my coffee. Just use those words, tap through the points with the cup in front of you and just see what comes up for you. Mm. It's an interesting experiment. The other thing that you can do is move your body. You can begin your day by going for a walk, doing some yoga, following a, a Qigong practice. And this doesn't have to be uh, you know, lots and lots of time involved. It can be 10 minutes, 10 minutes or 15 minutes will absolutely have a positive effect on your morning. Yeah. And getting out and walking about, I mean, in the summertime for me, it's, it might not be a, a walk, like I'm going to get exercise, but a walk in the garden and walking around the house and assessing what's happening, what flowers are coming off, maybe doing you know, a little bit of light gardening just to get my feet on the ground and fresh air in my lungs. Yeah, really important. And you know, that's how I started today. And I was feeling a little bit groggy and, and then was able to do that. So, so if you can move your body and I realize that there's going to be a number of listeners who are like, really, I don't have time for that. I barely have time to get out the door or I don't want to even leave the, you know, I don't want to leave the house. I don't want to move my body, but these are things to just try, just give it a try and see if it makes a difference for you. None of it takes a lot of time. Yeah. The most important thing is to do it regularly rather than think, oh, I need to do 20 minutes or half an hour or even an hour. 10 minutes a day, every day definitely makes a difference, even five minutes. And I think often with anxiety, we have that threshold where we have to ask ourselves, you know, how bad does it have to be for me to take action? Right. And if we're waking up feeling nauseous and shaky and dreading the day ahead every day, and that's uncomfortable enough for us to Try something different, just experiment mm -hmm. and bring in a little something in the morning to move our bodies, stretch it out, move some of that adrenaline that we might wake up with. And you'll make the time up later in the day because you'll be more functional and you'll be more balanced and more in control of your day. So it's, it really pays off. And this leads right into practicing self-compassion and self-acceptance. Be gentle with yourself. Morning anxiety is quite common, and it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. Just be sweet. Try practicing a slow and gentle start to your morning. We're not uh, firefighters. We're not rushing out to an emergency when we start the day. You don't want to be popping out of bed in that, in that state of, oh my goodness, it's an emergency. What's going on? This just provokes more stress and and anxiety. So a slow, gentle start. Give yourself more time. And if that means going to bed a little bit earlier at night, then do it. And also, there's a practice that I absolutely love. Before you even sit up or get out of bed, stay where you are. And try this. Place your left hand over your heart and your right hand over your navel. And take some slow, deep breaths. And just notice your hands rise and fall with your breath. Feel their warmth on your body. Be gentle with yourself and allow just a little time for gentle transition into being fully awake. I'll also follow this with a gratitude practice. Being grateful for a new day and grateful for the magic and miracles that are ahead of my, you know, ahead of me. There's a phrase that I like to use now, which is all my life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. It's not necessarily an affirmation. It's just that no matter what I'm going to be facing in the day, I'd like to see that come with ease, joy, and glory. So that's intention. You're setting this intention before you even get out of the bed. You're letting your body know, okay, I love you. Good morning. Here I am. <laughs> and then you get up. Instead of flying out of the bed and running to the shower or whatever it is that you might be doing yeah. that creates more stress. I think you raise a really important point there, Shan, that gratitude is 
a very powerful antidote for anxiety. Sometimes when anxiety gets a hold of our mind, it wipes everything out, very invasive. And we can get into that all or nothing thinking. And it's perfectly possible to be grateful and scared and grateful and worried. They can coexist. Anxiety and gratitude can coexist. But the more we move to gratitude, the more gratitude gets the upper hand. Brene Brown's done some really amazing teachings on when we feel those tender moments where we feel real connection and love for somebody close to us and then anxiety tries to come in and she shares that coexistence of, yes, this feels vulnerable and and concerning to me and I'm so grateful for. She doesn't even say but, it's and. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is causing me some some tenderheartedness or some worry and I'm so grateful for. And I think that's a really powerful practice. Yeah, it is because it doesn't have to be either or. It is both. Yeah. And life is both. Life is both. And if we allow ourselves that understanding that I can feel anxious right now, but I also love and accept myself. I can Mm -hmm. feel uh, a bit stressed, but I also can give thanks that I have the support that I need, the tools that I need, this podcast, my partner, my friend, what have you. And to remember that we're always in that loyal dance, that, that dance of life, which is a balance. And it's just where we are. And if we can identify that, this all or nothing thinking and really do our best to eliminate that, oh my goodness, it changes everything. It really does. It really does bring a, a softness and a, and a support, a sense of support in. Nutrition is also really important. And I know, again, I'll bring up eating breakfast and some people will say, but I can't eat breakfast because I feel nauseous or because I just you know, can't imagine eating something. And, and that will change if you give yourself more time in the morning. But we recommend that you eat breakfast and allow the extra time that, that you need to have something that will help you stabilize your blood sugar like whole wheat toast or oatmeal with cinnamon. You want to avoid breakfast that will spike your blood sugar initially and then cause a drop mid-morning. So donuts or danishes or things like that. Or yes, yeah, cereal. <laughs> you know, cereal, exactly. Not in your best interest. So if you can just, even if it's something light, my husband doesn't like to have breakfast in the morning, but he will have a slice of rye toast. He'll get something in there. Uh, and and then will do much better throughout the day as he gets to lunch than when he doesn't have a piece of toast. Yeah. And if there's morning nausea, which I have had experience with myself, and it's very challenging. Um, sadly, I didn't know this at the time, but I've since learned that if we take some hot water with a couple of slices of ginger or a couple of slices of lemon and sip that, start sipping that as soon as you've you know, cleaned your teeth and started getting going for the day, that really helps settle the stomach. And then tapping under the eye on the EFT tapping point that's under the eye, you can find the diagram at anxietyslayer.com forward slash EFT. Just tapping there and taking steady breaths, that point is on the stomach meridian in Chinese medicine. So it's very good for calming anxiety in the stomach, calming nausea in the stomach. You can start as soon as you feel nauseous, just take some warm water with a couple of slices of ginger and start tapping under your eye, taking steady breaths. And that will help settle the nausea. And EFT tapping is going to help you even if you don't feel nauseous. You can use it to clear your mind, to release the worries of of the day before you go to sleep, to start your day. Uh, Tapping can really help you feel more calm and positive about the day ahead. So remember how versatile tapping is. You can find guided tapping sessions on our Patreon page or in our EFT Tapping for Anxiety Relief course that can be found at anxietyslayer.teachable.com. You can get links to Patreon and to our academy through our website as well at anxietyslayer.com. Before we wrap today, one of the things that's really important is that a good morning actually starts the night before. And this is where we want to do all we can to support our sleep and relaxation the night before, before we go to bed. It's incredibly important to avoid screens and to switch 
to a warm bath with uh, magnesium salts, lavender if you have some, to read something gentle or inspiring, or to follow one of our guided meditations or one of your favorites, perhaps a gentle bedtime practice. You want to set up a nice, soothing, sweet way to go to sleep. And I know that there's a majority of folks who go to bed from screen to bed, watching a movie, uh, watching a television show, watching the news, whatever it may be, and then wonder why they have a hard time getting to sleep or have a hard time staying asleep because of the dreams that they have or what have you. And that's because we're just taking in too much. And the more screen time we have, the less our brain creates melatonin. And as as we get older, that's an issue anyway. So when you combine the two, you have a little bit of a challenge there. So it's important that you create a really sweet, gentle practice before bed. And if you go to bed worrying or wake up during the night with anxious thoughts, you're likely to feel anxious and concerned about your day in the morning. It's it's really this vicious cycle that we can we can really quell by having support in place that can help calm anxiety whenever it spikes up for you. Morning anxiety, we can get really fixated on all. That's the time that I suffer with anxiety, but it's all part of the bigger anxiety picture. So. As you just said, Shan, wherever we can tackle anxiety, you know, responding to general anxiety throughout the day with taking some breathing breaks, some tapping breaks, taking care of ourselves, making sure we're keeping hydrated. All these things help inform the morning anxiety. We also recommend making an anxiety slayer care kit and keeping it by your bed. And if you search our website, you can find our tips on creating a care kit. But some of the things that I always have by my bed, I have a rescue remedy spray. Um, I have uh, always have spring water by my bed. I have a, a salt lamp that I, that I love. I have some uh, lavender when it's in season. Um, and, but I also have lavender oil and another sleep oil that I like that they're just always there. They're always at my bed stand or, you know, in the drawer if I, if I need any of it, as well as the book that I'm reading, or there's lots more ideas, of course, um, that, that you can search for, but those are just some of the things that I have available and I don't need them every day, but they're there. And once you lower the baseline rate of your anxiety, you're going to experience less spikes and that means less morning anxiety. And isn't that the point? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it really is about cultivating some hope and having support in place and knowing that there are things you can do to help morning anxiety. And it might not happen overnight, but if you try a few of the things we've discussed here consistently, you should see a definite improvement within a few mornings. And let us know. Please share on our private Facebook group. It's very encouraging for other group members to see when there's some success and some change with anxiety. Absolutely. We'd love to hear from you. And before we close today, we'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who supported the podcast on Patreon this month and to our new patrons, Abby, Trudy, and Elizabeth. We really appreciate your support. And if you find the Anxiety Slayer podcast supportive, we hope you'll consider becoming a patron. We have over 50 Anxiety Slayer downloads available on Patreon, including our guided relaxations, tapping sessions, and lots of extra resources for calming your anxiety. And you can learn more at patreon.com forward slash anxiety slayer.